What is happening everybody? I just got back from a weekend of bikepacking and it's been a while since I've covered that topic on this channel. So I wanted to make a few videos starting with my pack list. This is meant to be a sort of pragmatic list of sensible items, not carrying too much, not carrying too little, but sort of managing to move comfortably. For anyone who's sort of looking for inspiration on how to start their bikepacking planning. There are plenty of ways to bikepack and this isn't necessarily the only way to do it, but this is the way that I have sort of come to like doing it. I will leave a list in the video description below of everything that I mention and try and link to things where possible. Now the fun thing is because I've come back, I can give rolling updates on what was good and what was bad about this particular setup. Let's start with ride clothing and we have bib shorts from Spin Cycle Clothing. Just a super nice pair of quite premium bib shorts. These have already done the Mawson Trail. Ultra comfortable, amazing chamois. So yeah, if you have good gear, take it bikepacking. Up top we have a just light merino blended base layer from Rafa, deep in the archive sale. Insulated gilet from Rafa, again from deep in the archive sale. I quite like this one because it does have some insulation in it for warmth and it also has a couple of pockets. So yeah, really nice item that one. Jersey is from an Adelaide company called Biketivist and it is a very nice and very comfortable jersey, lightweight for summer. What I really like about it though, is it has very long sleeves. So these go down to about the elbow and that just makes your sunscreening life a little bit easier. Just in case it rains, I have a race cape from the Peddler. This can be used in tandem with the gilet for a bit of warmth. Shouldn't rain too much while we're out there. We might get a little bit wet and a race cape should, fingers crossed, be fine. Finally, socks. And I have basically one merino pair and one light summer pair. I like to have a couple of pairs of socks because if your feet get wet, nice and easy to just switch them out and that is a huge comfort win. For my hand, the best gloves ever made. These are the Specialized Grails. They are just fantastic. I have four pairs of them. I've used basically no other road gloves for the last couple of years. Fantastic. Specialized Grail. Highly recommend. And another product I really rate is the DHB Wind Slam gloves. They're not too expensive. They're reasonably warm. They keep the wind out and they'll do with a little bit of rain. Again, it shouldn't be too rugged while we're out there. So yeah, that should be plenty. On my head goes the cask protone that is quite dirty and needs a clean. I mostly choose this one because it's just super comfortable and I like wearing it. There are lighter, there are more ventilated helmets I could choose, but I like that guy. On my feet are the fantastic Bont Riot shoes. I absolutely love these. There will be a review coming soon. And the reason I love them, Firstly, they're comfortable. Secondly, look at that tread on the bottom. They are fantastic for bikepacking because they are excellent for walking. Comfortable, rugged, very big fan of those shoes. In front of my eyes, I'm just gonna wear a pair of Oakley frog skins. And I really rate casual glasses like this for the simple reason that they fold down nice and flat. You can easily stash them in a pocket or a bag because they're nice and compact. Compare it to the Oakley Sutro and you can see you save a decent amount of space by just having small glasses. Look at that, easy. Now time for clothes off the bike and I'm gonna start with this Patagonia polyfill jacket. I do rather like it, it's quite warm and because it's the fully synthetic sort of puffiness, it means that it can get a little bit wet without sort of getting waterlogged and it will still keep you warm. It also folds up into itself. And there we go. You can certainly get smaller and cheaper jackets, but it's just really high quality and I quite like it. Boom. Other clothes for off the bike. We have just another pair of Merino socks because they always come in handy. One of my all time favorite t-shirts from North South. It is a Merino blend. Again, it is nice and warm and Merino helps you not to stink too badly. Spare pair of underwear because I am not a monster. Casual shorts from Rafa, again from deep in the archive sale. And these are a bit of a favorite of mine. These are basically swimming shorts with stitched in underwear in them. And the reason I carry these around is that you sometimes find yourself in a place where you might be able to bathe, like an outdoor shower or a river or something. And it's handy to have something to be able to swim in that is nice and light and, you know, modest. So you're not completely naked. With those clothes, I like to stuff them all inside a nice little compact dry bag. So let's get on it. There we go, spare clothes and spare warm jacket. Good to go. 
All right, let's do it with electronics now, starting with bike computer, and it is the Wahoo Element Roam. This is a review unit, and I have not used it yet, so yeah. Fingers crossed it works well for this adventure. And there's of course my phone, a completely thrashed and destroyed Pixel 2 XL. Front light is the fantastic exposure joystick. It is taped up because it's led a hard life. It's just a really high quality light, has a great beam, but importantly, it also can be remapped so you can choose your burn times on them. You don't really need a thousand lumens when bike packing most of the time, so you can turn it down and extend the battery life. So. Exposure joystick, love it. Rear light is a little Nog Plus, and the reason I like this is that it magnetically comes apart from its mount. Uh, it has not ever fallen out on me, so I do trust it. It's a good quality light, it's plenty bright, has a few flash modes, but if you look at that, it can actually slot onto bags, it can slot onto jersey pockets. It's just a nice little versatile piece. So recommendation on that one. Editor's note, it did in fact fall out when I put it through a little loop in my saddlebag. So, keep it in the mount. Still a good light though. Another Nog product is the Bandicoot headlamp. And this is just something that's super handy for having when you're setting up and breaking down camp in the dark. Headlamps are just yeah, really useful. Not too expensive, about 60 bucks, and pretty comfortable to wear. A little bit of a comfort item for me is just a set of Sony noise cancelling headphones. These are for when I get sick of my ride companions and I also find they help me get to sleep if you're somewhere that is a bit noisy. Not a strictly necessary item, but one that is nice and I like. This is the part where people tend to freak out. I just ride with a battery pack. I don't ride with a dynamo. I'm yet to go somewhere so off grid that I really feel like I need a dynamo and I can't be bothered spending the extra money on a hub and wheel. So this is just a Xiaomi 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. It's nice and flat. It's not too heavy. You can charge in and out at the same time. That will keep everything going, no worries. And I think it cost me about 20 bucks. And of course, we just have cables. I have a micro USB, USB-C, and the really stupid exposure proprietary cable for their light. Come on, exposure. Come on. Save me a cable. And finally, the Signet two port wall charger. This is an absolute life hack. Get a charger with two ports in it. It just makes everything so much easier and more efficient. Especially if you're traveling in a group, a couple of these means that everyone can charge up pretty much at the same time. Now the last electronic item is my Fujifilm X-T1 camera because I just really like taking photos and this takes very beautiful ones. I like to ride with it strapped over my back so it's always handy. You can get smaller cameras, you can get higher resolution cameras, but this one, just has a certain magic to it. It's also got sort of like a bit of weather sealing, so it can be out in the elements, you know, within reason. Alrighty, it's time for sleep setup, and my sleeping bag is the Cedar Summit Spark SP2. This is the older generation one, so this is, I believe, now the equivalent of the SP3, I think? They moved everything down one level. So yeah, this is the SP2, but it has a very, very good temperature range on it, and it's just very nice. So, Cedar Summit Spark. Bivy is the Katmandu XT. I don't even know if they make these anymore, but I got a mad half price deal on this like three years ago and it's been going strong. I'm gonna jump in here again and say that I've somewhat fallen out of love with this bivy because you need to be underneath something to tie it off your face. Both of my bikepacking companions had the Roman Centurion bivy, which has a small structure that keeps it off your face. It packs down to about the same size and it's a little bit cheaper than the Katmandu, so that is my recommendation now. Sleeping mat is the Climate Static V2. Again, I've had it for a few years and it just does the job fine. If unfortunately the sleeping mat valve decided to die on this trip, which meant sometime during the first night I was sleeping on the ground. Was not a fan of that. Luckily for me, one of my companions was leaving the trip after two days and I got to borrow his Sea to Summit mat. This is the ultralight air and it was way better. So yeah, that is my recommendation now. Lastly, we have a Cedar Summit inflatable pillow. If you don't have one of these, they are brilliant. They cost basically nothing, like 20, 30 bucks. They are tiny and they are light and they just add a little bit of comfort. Love an inflatable pillow, highly recommended. Toiletries are simple, starting with sunscreen. I have this one with a carabiner hook on it so I can keep it on my saddle pack and it is always available when you need it. Other than that, we just have a toothbrush, a tiny little thing of toothpaste and some lip balm. That pretty much does it. Tools and spares are gonna be simple. Starting with just a single 650B tube. Yes, only one because we are all set up tubeless and we are all running the same wheel size. So we don't need a million tubes. 
On that note, we have the Dyna Plug Racer. It's the two-ended one, so you can get a couple of different plugs on there. Still yet to even have to use these. I've never actually punctured on a gravel ride. Famous last words. Multi-tool is from Pro. This is the 22 function, I think it's called, and this is just a fantastic tool. It does basically everything. Has all of your standard sort of uh, hex keys and T25 keys in there. But this side is very cool. It has a chain breaker. It has a tire lever down on the bottom. Also has spoke keys and a chain holding thing there. All in a very light and compact package that's not particularly expensive. There we go, absolutely love this thing. Another cheap little life hack is this little roll of sticky tape that comes flat. I think I bought it at a service station a little while ago and yeah, I just need it as required. Swiss Army knife, because you never know. We have some patch cement, a few patches, some glueless patches, a couple of spare darts, uh, a chain link that is actually a 12 speed Eagle one, I'll swap that over for a Shimano one. A little tool to get your valve cores out and a spare seat clamp bolt. You never know. Now the final piece is something I really recommend at least one person in your group has. It is a decent quality pump. This is the Bontrager Mini Charger and this just has so many advantages over a small hand pump. It sort of folds out to be roughly like a traditional pump. It has a little pressure gauge on it and it just gets air in at a reasonable speed. These are super important, particularly in the age of tubeless and particularly in the age of sort of decent volume tubeless. All you need is one very annoying puncture for this little thing to be more than worth its ticket price. So yeah, make sure one person or make sure you have something along these lines because they've saved me before and they're not that expensive. One final little thing that I sort of class in these is a small combination lock, just something light and compact. This is literally just an inconvenience lock. You need to leave your bike unattended. This is just enough to stop someone from basically walking away with it. We're now deep into the extra credit items and here we have a pair of thongs or flip-flops depending on where you are in the world, a small Kathmandu travel towel for obvious reasons, and a fantastic little item. This is a Sea to Summit backpack. Look at the size of this thing. It is absolutely tiny. When you're traveling sort of out of town, if you've got like an overnight stop, you can load this thing up and just carry it on your back and it is that big, fantastic. And for overnight stops, I have an MSR overnight bladder. Again, it folds down nice and small. Put a couple of liters in it when you're heading to camp and that should get you through the night. Next is of course the obligatory metal mug for drinking your classy beverages out of because we are bringing a barista with us, which is great. And a titanium spork because cold tin spaghetti is definitely a meal. There's a few other things I probably forgot to mention, just things like spare straps, also things like spare plastic Ziploc bags. These are things that like cycling apparel comes in and I like to keep them and keep using them for whatever reason I can. So yeah, nice little bit of plastic bag, really handy for separating things. If something gets wet or really dirty, you can sort of put it inside one of these and keep it inside with all your other stuff without getting it all dirty. I think that's it guys. So what did I miss? What would you have taken that I didn't? What do you think other people need to know about that I didn't cover? Leave it in the description below. And that is where I'm gonna leave it for now. I've got another video coming up about my setup. So keep an eye out for that. Until then, ride safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time.